I'm John Odenkirk. I'm a fisheries biologist with the Virginia Department of Game and Inland Fisheries. We are in Fairfax County, just off of Route 1. It's called Doag Creek. This is a tributary to the Potomac River, and we're doing some backpack electrofishing surveys, primarily looking for snakehead fish, northern snakeheads, but also looking for to see what else is here. Got a young year. Potentially, this fish could, uh, you know, alter the ecosystem and would be a competitor to uh, the space that currently the largemouth bass provides. So because of that, and just for the pure science issue, the fact we've got an invasive species potentially restructuring the, the aquatic ecosystem, we want, obviously want to be able to track that, even though at this point there's probably nothing we can do to stop it or maybe not even slow it down, but I think it's, a possible, it's, it's, it's important that we understand what's occurring and be able to document it. That's a big one. This is uh, an incredible amount of biomass not just the snakeheads, but of, uh, as you can see, bluegill and pumpkin seeds and brown bullheads, killifish, a few gizzard shad mixed in, a few crappie. Unbelievable to see this many fish packed into such a small stream. Nice. Some of the attributes, the physical and, and capability uh, attributes of this fish were, were grossly overstated. Some of the initial reports, you know, I, I think it was more of a, made a great media story, the frankenfish and the walking across land and attacking small dogs. And, but all that is, is, of course, greatly overstated, and the movies notwithstanding. This fish does have uh, a, a high capacity to tolerate poor water quality conditions. And it does have some competitive advantages on fish like largemouth that are more prevalent here, such as a protracted or repeat spawning season, such as a dual parental guarding of the brood, which might give them a competitive advantage. And we're just trying to gain information about the fish, where it's occurring, is the range expanding, are the densities increasing, and, and biological characteristics about the population, growth rates, fecundity, mortality. Yeah, we're stuck with them. Even if we want, even if we tried to mobilize and do everything known to science and, and fisheries to, to remove these things, we wouldn't even come close. If, if you wanted to list the attributes of a desirable food and sport fish, you look at the, the northern snakehead and, and there you go. I mean, you have a fish that, based on all accounts that we've had from anglers that have caught them, hits anything that it's thrown at it almost. Um, so it, it doesn't show a preference for any particular bait. It hits with gusto. It fights hard. It, and, it, and it tastes good. It's supposedly they're fantastic eating and, and they, they're prolific and they grow fast. So it, it seems like uh, this certainly could be, if you're looking at for a silver lining or the glass half full, that this could be a, a, a fishery that maybe at some point some will actually come to know and love and, and appreciate, but at this point we're still concerned about potential downside. That we see, especially working in an urban area such as this in Northern Virginia, Fairfax, I work in Arlington Counties, Alexandria, and, and you'll see a lot of uh, exotic fish like Oscars or things you expect to see in a pet store, aquarium trade. What happens is people, um, either they're moving or the, they, they can't afford to feed the fish, and it's not necessarily just fish. It could be plants in an aquarium. It could be uh, some sort of uh, a house pet in terms of a, a little furry creature, and, and they don't want to kill it, but they have to do something with it, so they tend to take it out to the nearest woodlot or the nearest pond, the nearest stream. And, and that's where we end up with problems. You know, you look at the zebra mussels and the, the, the catastrophe and the economic damage and, and the millions that that's caused. And, and you, it doesn't take long to realize that, that, that the snakehead just is a reminder of what can happen if they're taken out of their proper place and put somewhere where they really don't belong. They haven't evolved, they haven't become adapted to that system. So we, that, that's a good, a good reminder for everyone to kind of be careful with what they do at a personal level uh, because things can have economic and ecological impacts.